on various aspects of photographers. Since 2017, this workshop is being conducted in the name of National Photonic Symposium. This year, we are more than happy to be conducting the symposium as an international conference in the light of Silver Jubilee celebrations of the department. Let's begin. Let's begin the inaugural ceremony by seeking blessings from the Almighty. Pray. <laughs> all from International School of Photonics. I am extremely happy that we are in the inaugural ceremony of the long-awaited International Conference on Recent Trends in Photonics. International School of Photonics, which was founded on February 18, February 28, 1995, has been witnessing the conduct of annual scientific meetings year, every year during February 27 to 28 since 1997. The event transformed into an annual photonics workshop from 2017. It is being organized as a national photonics symposium, conducted over three days. This year, we present the scientific meeting as an international conference on recent trends in photonics as part of the Silver Jubilee celebrations of the school. The Silver Jubilee celebrations was inaugurated by Nobel laureate Professor Donna Strickland on February 25, 2021. As part of the Silver Jubilee celebrations, we are also conducting a webinar series. We had five lectures in the series from Professor Kyoko Nosaki, University of Tokyo, Professor Matthias Valent, University of Nova Gorica, Slovenia, Professor Michel Rietrat from France, Dr. Devi Kumar from Singapore, and Professor C. Jagdish from Australian National University, Canberra. We have also scheduled a few more lectures for March, starting by Professor Robert Boyd from University of Waterloo, Professor John Koslow from Dublin City University, Professor Anil Patnaik from US Air Force Institute, and Professor Rajesh Vinayak from Indian Institute of Technology, Roper. This series will extend till the end of this year. International School of Photonics has always been on top for its academic and research activities, and every year, we present those students who have performed exceptionally well in their academics with awards during this meeting. But due to the pandemic this year, the students are not receiving the awards in person. Let me now move on to the pleasant duty interested on me. We are delighted to have the presence of our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Kane Madhusudanan, who has accepted our invitation for inaugurating this event. Professor Madhusudanan has always been a point of strength and support to us. On behalf of all members of the organizing committee and the participants, I extend our hearty welcome to you, sir. <laughs> Professor Ibrahim Karimi, University of Ottawa, will be delivering the keynote address. Let me welcome Professor Karimi, who has joined online on behalf of the organizing committee and the delegates and on my personal behalf to this function. We also have Professor Robert Bingham from Science and Technology Facility Council, RAL UK, Professor Antonello Adrian from University of Naples, Professor Arvinda Sandhu, University of Arizona, Professor Yana Jagaska from the Arctic University of Norway, Prof. 
professor pravin walke from university of mumbai dr deepak amrath from Tass hiroshima university japan dr harbesh ms from the palmetti palm oil company i welcome all of them to the conference we also have 36 posters and 22 oral presentations scheduled let me welcome all my colleagues and convener let me welcome my colleague and convener of this conference dr priya to this function we have more than 180 registered delegates for this event i take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this conference on behalf of the organizing committee even though it is conducted on a weekend my colleagues faculty members research fellows postdoctoral fellows master students and administrative staff have been my backbone in organizing this event let me welcome each one of them to this function once again welcoming all thank you now i'd like to invite honorable vice chancellor of the university of science and technology Professor Dr. K. N. Madhusudan for inaugurating the conference by lighting the lamp and for the inaugural address thereafter. Now, we are moving on to the interesting event, the award ceremony. Professor Pramod, distinguished professors facing this conference, faculty members, participants of the conference, students and friends. I'm extremely happy to be part of the international conference on recent trends in photonics. It's a very, very important event for the university as well as International School of Photonics. As we are celebrating the silver jubilee of the school. In its existence over 25 years, International School of Photonics has gained acclaim from the scientific community across the globe. Our students and researchers put their mark in their scientific contribution. And that has been accepted well by the scientific community across the world. Our students are working in reputed laboratories in different parts of the world. And I'm happy to note that all of the students, alumni, they're doing extremely well in this, in the chosen area of activity. 
this time, the international conference the school has organized as part of Silver Jubilee, we could elicit the, the support of very distinguished scientists in the field of photonics, optics, and related areas. That itself shows how the school has established itself over these years and made a noticeable presence in its area of activity. I wish this conference all the very best. I'm sure the deliberations at the conference will help enhance our knowledge, our future interactions with the eminent scientists at the various institutions. Once again, I wish the conference all the best. I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, we'll move on to the award ceremony. Since we are hosting the conference on an online platform, and it's that for the best research award, the award-winning students are not in the class anymore. But we would like to display the awards on the screen as a mark of appreciation to the winners. Arrangements will be made for the winners to come and collect the awards and certificates from the department, later at their convenient time. The first category is Narendra Endowment Fund. This is given to the student who secures highest grade point average for the first semester of MC Final Degree Program for Arts. This award was instituted by Professor N.G. Devaki, Emeritus Professor of the Department of Hindi Kuching University of Science and Technology. The Nalanda Endowment Prize 2020 goes to Mr. Frencher Nobel Medal. Congrats, Mr. Frencher. Next is the Professor Leggett Award. And the award is given to the student who secures highest cumulative grade point average in MC final degree program for honors. The award was instituted by Professor Anthony Leggett. He was a theoretical physicist and his pioneering work on superfluidity was recognized by the 2003 Nobel Prize winner. Professor Leggett Award 2020 goes to Ms. Gayatri Reshma Shashtar. Congratulations, Gayatri. Next is the P.V. Raman Award. This award is given for best thesis presented in the final semester of MSc Photonics, and this award was instituted by Professor V.P.N. Nambuvi, former director and one of the founding pillars of the department. P.V. Raman Award 2020 goes to Mr. Shiju Prasad S.R. Congrats, Mr. Shiju. Next, it is the Photonic Society of India Award. This award, instituted by Professor C.P. Gidhidhavala, one of the emeritus professors of International School of Photonics, the award is given on behalf of Photonic Society of India to the student who secured highest cumulative grade point average in the MT program in Octal Electronics and Laser Technology. And Photonic Society of India Award 2020 goes to Ms. Anjali A. She is a student of 2018 20 MN batch. Congrats, Ms. Anjali. Next is the Satish John Memorial Award. This award is given for the best thesis presented as part of MT program in Octal Electronic and Laser Technology. The award was instituted in memory of late Mr. Satish John, who was an MT student of our department and the award was instituted by the staff students. Satish John Memorial Award 2020 goes to Master Ajman CJ, 2018-2020 MDEC batch. Yeah. Next is the awaited category MNC researchers. The best researcher award. This award is given to the research scholar with the highest factor done in fact factor by considering his or her publications during the last year. This award was instituted by Professor P. Ramakrishnan, former director of the department. The best researcher award 2020 goes to Ms. Alina P. Kiriakos. She's doing research 
in the light of the 25th year of the department. The department entrusted me with a great responsibility and <clears throat> without the help of many people around me, it would not have been a possible. So let me now start my PT of the day. <clears throat> Our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Dr. K. Mathisudanen, is always a pillar of support for our department. So from the beginning of the planning of this event, he has always been there for us, helping us uh, with uh, funds or support in all other ways. And he also readily agreed to come on this day here and be physically present here for the inaugural ceremony. I take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Dr. Kane Madhusudan uh, on my own behalf and on behalf of the rest of uh, today we have the keynote address from one of, uh, the, one of the most excellent researchers around the world, that is Professor Ebrahim Karimi from the University of Dhaka. And I'm also fortunate enough to have him as a friend of mine, and he'll be delivering this talk soon. He uh, readily agreed to give the uh, keynote address when I asked him. And also, even though it's close to midnight in the right now, he's present online with us uh, in this entire program of the innovation. I thank him from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Professor Kari. The last year, we have seen some unprecedented events, and most of the activities of the department and the university were you know, interrupted uh, with the pandemic. But we had a leader who was ready to take challenges and lead from a uh, leading trend. And without you know, the wholehearted support of Professor Dr. Pramod Gopinath, this event would not have taken hope. I take this opportunity to thank him for, from my heart and from the part of all present here. Thank you, sir. Uh, in the coming days, we'll be having uh, lectures delivered to us from eminent speakers around the world. And this being an international conference, 
we were we were fortunate enough to have speakers agreeing to deliver their talks to us, even though the you know, time zones and other problems were there, they really agreed. I take this opportunity to thank one and all of the invited speakers of this event. And uh, we have uh, more than 150 registered participants for this event. And without the participation, active participation of the research community around the globe, this event uh, has no meaning. So I take this opportunity to thank one and all of the participants of, of the event. This event, from its planning stage itself, I, have, I was fortunate enough to have the support from all my colleagues of the International School of Photonics. Each faculty members were given the charge of the committee and they readily agreed to do this, take up this responsibility. And even during these difficult times, they managed to get everything done. And I take this opportunity to thank all of my colleagues here at the International School of Photonics. And the, as we are in the 25th year of this department, I would also like to thankfully remember all the senior professors, uh, Professor Dr. C.B. Vijjavalapan, uh, Professor V.P. Nampuri, Professor V.P. Mandakumaran, and Dr. V.P. Radharshi uh, on the location because these people paved the way to excellence of the department. I thankfully remember all of them this in this event. Thank you, sirs. This event, even though it's uh, mostly done online, requires a lot of human effort. And without the help of our students, we couldn't even plan anything like this. I take this opportunity to thank all the PhD students who are working day and night to make this event happen. And this year, we actually place our PhD students here. Only 10 of the MTech students are there present. Most of our MSc students are having learning from home. But even in this case, they have taken part in many of the planning stages. They have done a lot of uh, effort for us. And I, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to all of the students of the department. And uh, last but not least, I also want to thank all the sponsors of this event. Uh, we were fortunate enough to receive some funding from uh, our state plant fund. And apart from that, we are also we also got some uh, industry partners supporting us, like Edmund Optics, Infrared Optics, Atos uh, Instruments, and Orma. So I take this opportunity to thank and all of them uh, in this event. So with that, I would like to thank once again all the people present here and all who joined the event online. And once again, thank you all and for joining. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We will begin the inaugural the inaugural talk. He will address very shortly. The speaker is Professor Ibrahim Kirini. And we will deliver the keynote address of the structural photons, their application in quantum photons. So we will meet for the first session. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. We'll be starting very soon, okay? Sure, no worries. Uh, I had a little bit of difficulties with my uh, MacBook Pro, so now I moved to my iPad and my iMac, so <laughs> I have ah, to arrange it somehow. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. It happens, yes. Uh, other people, they, they, can they hear us or not? Excuse me, sir? Can other people hear us or not right now? I mean, yes, yes, people can hear us, yes. Okay, because I want to tell you something in private. I have a little bit of difficulties in hearing people. So uh, if there is something that I have to be aware, please, would you- No, no, actually, no. No, the thing is that it was actually, 
a broadcaster using a microphone on the table okay so it was oh, not oh, okay yeah that was the reason yes okay Understood. yeah but now onwards we would be just talking to the computer computer uh, microphone so it would be much much easier and audible okay lovely thank you very much yeah sure please let me let us know if you have if you face any difficulties okay we'll be very very happy to help you absolutely thank you very much welcome yeah we'll start just uh, just in in two three minutes Is the sound quality good? Yes, it is absolutely perfect. Yes, it's absolutely okay. perfect. And if you would like, you can try to share your screen and check if it works. Yes, let me do, I will do the share screening on my iPad. Yeah. Uh, it, sees, it says to me that I cannot turn on the video. I cannot also share the screen because Hoss should give me the permission. Yes, yes, yes. This, 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 I will do it just in a minute, okay? Just, Lovely. Just in a minute. Just give me one minute. Do you mean the voice is not clear? Yes, sir. Now you should be able to do that. Lovely. That's fantastic. Yeah. Someone has raised hands. Yeah, I think not. maybe by mistake. <laughs> Yes, loudly. Yes, yes. I can see. Yes. Good. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Yes. Maybe you can try in full screen mode and see if it works. Yes, yes, it works perfect. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. 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 So just one more minute for the chair to join and then we start. Absolutely. You are also in lockdown, right? Excuse me, sir? Are you in lockdown as well? No, no, no. Actually, no. No, no. No, no, not anymore. Okay. Good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear this, that the situation is better. Yeah, yeah but, uh, but actually, we don't know if it is better, but still. So, hello, sir. The chair is here. So, uh, I will hand over the session to the chair and he will initiate the, the, the meeting. Yeah. Over to you, Pramo, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Praveen. Good morning, Professor Ibrahim Karimi. Hi. Good morning. Uh, uh, um, I'm, I'm glad to be meeting you. Okay. Uh, Good morning to you all. Let us begin uh, the keynote address. Let me briefly introduce uh, Professor Ibrahim Karimi. Professor Ibrahim Karimi received his PhD degree from the University of Naples, Federico II in 2009. He holds Canada, Canada Research Chair in Structured Light at the University of Ottawa. His research focuses on structured quantum waves 
and their applications in quantum communication, quantum simulation, quantum sensing, and material science. He has published over 140 scientific articles in peer-reviewed journals, including science, nature, nature physics, nature materials, nature photonics, nature communications, science advances, and physical review letters. And he is the co-inventor on three patents. His contributions notably include studies pertaining to the relationship between the quantum spatial properties of photons and electrons and their internal properties. He is a member of the Royal Society of Canada and the Global Young Academy, a fellow of the Optical Society, visiting fellow of Max Planck Institute for Science of Light, fellow of the Nat National Research Council, Canada, Joint Center for Extreme Photonics, and adjunct professor in IASBS Iran. He received the Ontario Ministry of Research, Innovation, and Science Early Researcher Award in 2018, the University of Ottawa Early Career Researcher of the Year in 2019, and the Canadian Association of Physicists Erzberg Medal in 2020. Professor Academy is also an associate editor of Optics Express since 2016. Applications of structured quantum waves in modern science and technology are the main subject of his research team and structured quantum optics group. I welcome Professor Ibrahim Karimi to deliver the keynote address. The title of his talk is going to be Structured Photons, Their Applications in Quantum Photonics. Professor Ibrahim Karimi, over to you. Yeah. First of all, thank you very much for your kind invitation, uh, Professor. Copina. So uh, thank, thanks a lot. And also, I would like to express my sincere thanks to, uh, to Professor Rose uh, for kind invitation uh, to give uh, the speech in, uh, uh, in, uh, in your institute and in your conference. It's, it's a true honor uh, uh, to be the panel speaker in your meeting. And hopefully, when the pandemic is over, I promise that I will come over and uh, I would like to, to see uh, beautiful India, of course, and also maybe possibly having a, the starting a collaboration uh, with your institute. So uh, as uh, uh, Professor Gopinath mentioned, uh, uh, I'm, I'm at the University of Ottawa. However, uh, uh, also I do a lot of collaborations and uh, uh, thanks to the, the freedom the University of Ottawa gave us, uh, we have um, uh, uh, fruitful collaboration with National Research Council Canada, with Max Planck uh, Institute for the Science of Light in Erlangen, and also uh, I since I came I came from Iran, I start uh, I still have a tie with uh, with the institute that I graduated from uh, from. So uh, I still work uh, with them. Usually we have visitors from ISPS, which they are coming to Ottawa. So essentially, usually I make jokes, I'm essentially a quantum guy. I am in six, five different superpositions. So I, depending on your observation, you can find me in either of those places. So uh, the talk of today, I mean, uh, as uh, Professor uh, Gopinath mentioned, uh, I, uh, I do research activities in the field of quantum, uh, structured quantum waves and uh, mainly working with photons and with electrons. Uh, since this, uh, this talk is for photonics people, I will start to only work and talk about uh, 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 structured photons and Z applications. It requires to understand having a better understanding uh, of structural light in classical regime and then moving to quantum regime. So uh, when we talk about structural light, essentially, uh, we are talking about different degrees of freedom of light. So essentially, you can have it for single photon, or you can have it for coherent state, or you can have it for discrete state. Uh, how are these different degrees of freedom? If I like to uh, simplify only in one slide, it can be associated, it can be uh, can be simplified in, in four uh, different categories. Either it is spin angular momentum, or what we know in classical regime, we call it polarization of light. 
And uh, this polarization of light is transfer. So essentially, it can be either left-handed or right-handed, if uh, a coherent superposition of these two, or can be uh, H-polarization, V-polarization, which is a different base or anti-diagonal, diagonal one. So in the quantum regime, I would like to call it with, uh, with, this, uh, with a ket of pi. And I know that pi will take only two values of plus one and minus one. Or if you wish, you can like call it left-handed and right-handed. Uh, since the time of Kepler, also we know that light carries linear momentum, and uh, and uh, I associate the ket of k or kappa with linear momentum. And linear momentum essentially is unbounded; it can be changing from zero to to infinity. So uh, that's an unbounded space is continuous space. This one is bounded space. When we talk about light electromagnetic field, uh, then also we deal with intensity and phase of light. Essentially, phase of light also can be quantized. And since most of optics that we do have in laboratory, uh, they are cylindrical symmetry, then we do prefer to do this quantization in cylindrical coordinate. And in the cylindrical coordinate, the azimuthal direction will be quantized and we, uh, uh, this quantization will tell us how the phase of the beam uh, uh, will depend on azimuthal coordinate uh, uh, of phi. And then this uh, dependency will be given by exponential of i uh, L phi, which L is an integer quantity. And then uh, the consequence is that instead of working with plan planar waves, you deal with some sort of waves which we call them twisted waves. Or if you want to translate it in terms of angular momentum concept, it is, uh, it, is a, 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 it carries angular momentum. And the other side, also the radial part in the cylindrical coordinate can be quantized and the quantization will be given by a P, uh, let's say state. And this P state again is unbounded uh, but it, uh, it, uh, 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 the group representation is more complicated uh, than, uh, than we know. Uh, it, people, they didn't look into P until 2012, which uh, uh, with my ex-supervisor, Enrico Santomato, we looked into uh, that property. And later on in, uh, in Ottawa, I have performed several experiments just showing to the people that the P quantum also a p number uh, associated to, to radial uh, distribution of photons also is a good quantum number and can be used for, uh, uh, for quantum information processing. Uh, so uh, it, we have different ways to create and manipulate all of these different degrees of freedom. For example, if we talk about polarization, then you can use wave plates to control the polarization of light you can use half wave plate and a quarter wave plate. Essentially, you can start from a linear polarization or a given polarization and doing any polarization that you want to create. And you can generate an arbitrary polarization state coherently. Uh, 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 and also, when we talk about uh, spatial modes, which includes orbital momentum and radial part, then also you can use a device which is look like a video projector, which we call it spatial light modulator. And pixel by pixel, you can control intensity and phase, or only intensity or phase. Uh, and then with this technique, you can manipulate intensity and phase of uh, an optical beam. However, in our laboratory, which technique we use, uh, it's, it's a technique that works based on uh, geometric phase or pancharatman berry phase, uh, uh, which essentially what we do we take a piece of glass, which is made of uh, IT, is, is ITO glass. So essentially, it has a layer of uh, uh, conducting material, transparent material. And then pixel by pixel, we'll start to coat it with a specific polymer. And uh, 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 sorry, we coat it with a specific polymer. And pixel by pixel, we align the orientation of the polymer in a specific topology. For example, as you see, here, the, top, the, the, the topology that you have it is like that, here is like that, while here is oriented like this way or this way. So point by point, we can control the orientation of uh, the, polymer, the polymer, and then we take two pieces of, uh, two, two of those glasses and we glue them together and we insert liquid crystal inside of them. 
Liquid crystal is a birefringent material and essentially look for minimum interaction between the two surfaces, which is dictated by the orientation of the polymide. And finally, what you will get, you will get exactly the same topology imprinted to the liquid crystal. So when the light is passing through this, uh, depending on the orientation of the liquid crystal will gain a specific phase. And by applying a voltage to that, you can control that which sort of polarization state you want to create. Um, uh, uh, and what, you, uh, what essentially you will get, uh, you can control intensity and phase of the beam and also polarization state. So essentially you can create any almost arbitrary sort of uh, 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 to a structure beam. So for example, this is inch kosher beam. This is the pattern that we wrote, uh, we, we decided to write it in, in a low resolution just to show to the people that there are segments that essentially we can control the orientation of liquid crystal. And in those segments, essentially the orientation of liquid crystal is given by this here color side. And uh, that was the pattern that we want to write. And when you shine light on the top of these, then what you will get, you will get a structured beam which in this structure beam has a specific intensity. This is the experimental result. And if you look at the interference of these, we will get the pattern which is, uh, shows to you where you have phase singularity or you do have places then uh, that phase is, uh, is undefined or you have a jump in the phase. All right, you can also create very complicated topologies like AD beams, which people, they use it in microscopy just to accelerate particles. And also it may have some application in radar when you want to see something beyond an obstacle, they claim. Uh, and uh, as you see that just by structuring these liquid crystal pattern, which is just a small slab of, let's say four microns, you can create any topologies that you wish, not only in intensity, but also in the phase and, and, and polarization distribution. As, as a challenge, one of my uh, undergraduate students uh, back in 2016, he created a, a beam which carries orbit and angular momentum of 400. So essentially, if you measure these places, you will end up with 800, uh, let's say, uh, lobes of intensity, so bright and dark regions. So this is the technique that we use for uh, generating uh, uh, structured light in our laboratory and structured photons in, uh, in, in the quantum regime. So if I want to tell you in the quantum regime, the, the quantum state, if you want to assign a wave function to the photon, I have to be a little bit careful with that because uh, if a photon is not a solution to the Schrodinger equation. You can find it in a Riemann uh, uh, Silberstein formalism, something like a Dirac equation for it. But anyway, what we can get for the wave function of photon, if you want to, if you want to just uh, assign different degrees of freedom, you can control frequency of photon. You can control the polarization of photon. You can control the uh, number distribution, essentially going with Fox state or going with covalent state or going with squeeze state. And also you can control uh, radial uh, uh, index and also you can control the azimuthal index. So those are the properties of all of them. So frequency can be a, a real quantity. You can change it from zero to infinity, polarization only to taking two values. A photon number is a positive integer. Uh, sorry, it is an integer. Uh, uh, P is a positive integer. L is an integer quantity. So, uh, for example, I want to show to you uh, what is happening with a structure photon, which is a coherent superposition of p equal to, uh, to two, uh, of, uh, orbital angular momentum of one, and polarization state of left-handed, with uh, p of one, uh, orbital angular momentum of minus three, and other, other polarization, which is right-handed uh, sequel polarization. So if you do coherent superposition of these, at the end, what you will end up, you don't end up with a uniform polarization distribution for the light or uni and uniform intensity distribution. You end up with, with a very rich topological structure, which essentially point by point polarization of light is changed. And you see that in some specific region, like here is linear polarization or here is linear polarization. In some other region is elliptical polarization. In some other region might be also sequel polarization. And moreover, you can see that left-handed and right-handed ellipticity, ellipticity will be controlled. 
In specific region, you have no intensity, including the origin. And in other regions, you have a, a varying intensity profile. So this is what I call it structured photons or structured light if you want to create if you want to create it in a different regime. All right. So when we talk about these rich topologies, then uh, like mathematicians, we like to define physical properties there as well. So uh, I want to remind you about the polarization. So we know the polarization will take two values and it is good to show it on the Poincare sphere uh, just to have a feeling about Stokes measurements. I, I'm sure that you're coming from photonics community. So uh, left-handed will be on, on the North Pole is one way of representing this. Left-handed will be on the North Pole, right-handed will be on the, uh, on the South Pole. On the equator, what we will get, we will get equal superposition of left and right, which ends up with a linear position. However, if you, uh, change, if you move around the equator, you will go from H polarization to V polarization, and between anti-diagonal at the end, you will get diagonal polarization. So essentially, if you want to define polarization state, we show it with an, uh, with an ellipse, which is polarization ellipse. And for the polarization ellipse, we have a major axis and a minor axis and an orientation, plus a way that electric field is oscillating, either clockwise or counterclockwise. So then that is what, is what we call it, uh, polarization ellipse. So it has all of these four, let's say, features. So orientation of the ellipse, major and minor axis, and the way that electric field is oscillating. Any, in any places that we have ambiguity about one of those property, we call it singularity. This singularity is a mathematical defi definition associated to Stokes measurements, not associated to, uh, to, to a physical problem of, let's say, physical singularities. For example, if you take a uh, despolarization ellipse and make a circle like what we have it, then we have no clue what is the major and minor axis. And we call these singular, polar, singular polarization. And we call it in, in, a, in a short C point or a, a circular polarization point. And when this polarization ellipse becomes linear polarization, then we have no clue about the orientation of the electric field. If the electric field is going clockwise or counterclockwise, it goes both sides. In the last case, essentially S3, which is a Stokes measurements, will be zero. In the first case, for the C points, we call them S1 and S2, they are equal to zero. All right, so let's pick up one of the examples that uh, Sam Michael Berry and John Nye, uh, they had it back in, I, th I think, in the in, uh, in, uh, 70s, if I'm not wrong, 70s or 80s. Uh, uh, which is what they refer to as lemon topology. And here, I want to define all of those singular points. At the center, we have a C polarization. So we call these C point S1 and S2, they are zero here. And in the region around that, we have a linear polarization. So essentially, we have S3 equal to zero. So those are polarization singularities for us. So essentially, the beam, when it's propagating, Upon propagation, C points becomes a C line. It will be a line that you have C polarization, and the point, the surface, the, the line of uh, linear polarization becomes a surface which uh, embeds the region that you have a C polarization. I hope that is clear that this is the definition of uh, uh, polarization singularities. We can have three major polarization singularities, which is borrowed from uh, differential geometry, is a lemon topology. And why we call it lemon? Uh, because the shape, if you look at the shape, is look like a lemon, okay? And this topology has, a, a, a topo uh, this polarization topology has a topological charge of one half. And some people, they may ask me, how do you define the, uh, uh, the uh, the polarization topology, which is equal to one half, essentially assuming that I have a vector here, let's start to do a rotation around the origin and coming back to the same place, go counterclockwise and look at the vector, how it evolves. And if you come here, you will see the vector is rotated. Here, the vector is rotated. 
here the vector is rotated, here the vector is rotated. Finally, it comes back to the same place, but the orientation previously was like this, and now you end up with that orientation. So essentially, this specific vector has rotated pi in a positive direction, because you go counterclockwise, and this vector also rotates counterclockwise, divided by a full rotation, which is two pi, then you end up with one divided by two. This is what we call it the polarization topology of eta equal to one divided by two for this specific case. As an exercise, you can do that also for this specific case, which is minus one divided by two. And if you do that for this one also, that will be one divided by two. All right, so we do have three essential polarization singularity, which are, the rest can be decomposed in those bases. So people, they study these very well. However, one of the questions that remained in the community was that what is happening if you take these, one of those beams and doing a tight focusing regime? Uh, what I mean by tight focusing regime, going into a regime which the beam is not anymore paraxial, but it becomes non-paraxial regime. So the longitudinal component of the electric field will be excited. Don't worry, electric field locally is transverse, but what is happening due to the tight focusing that you do have a lens and a plane wave, then which it comes in, then it gets extremely uh, focused, then the electric field is not any more transverse and oscillating in this plane, but it oscillates in this plane. Then if you look at the orientation of that, what you will get along X is Z, Z direction, which is propagation direction, you have a component of the electric field. So nothing is wrong with that. I mean, Maxwell, Maxwell equations will describe everything here. But the question is that what is happening with one of those beams, let's say this beam, this specific beam or that one, and if you do the tight focusing. So that was a puzzle almost for, uh, uh, for a decade in a community. One of my colleague, uh, 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 Peter Banzer in, in, uh, in uh, Erlangen, essentially in the group of Gerd Bloix, uh, and I, we had a meeting together and, uh, uh, and we, uh, I realized that they can do the experiment for us. So uh, we, we jointly performed the experiment. Uh, I went to Erlangen and we tried to, to do the reconstruction of the electric field at the focus. And what you will end up that the intensity, although the intensity is cylindrical symmetric due to the tight focusing and what we call the spin orbit coupling along the original direction, the beam becomes three-fold symmetry is not anymore cylindrical symmetry. And that is the theory that you expect. You have e EX, you have EY, and you have EZ. So then they had a, a, a nanoparticle here. I mean, in the dimension, a gold nanoparticle in the dimension of 100 nanometers. They do the raster scanning here, and they look at the forward scattering and backward scattering. And finally, they were able to decompose in terms of YLM and understanding what's going on with electric field uh, uh, at the focus, but all three components of the electric field at the focus, including the phase. So they reconstructed, reconstructed the electric field, the uh, relative phase among all of those uh, components of the electric field. Look at the value of these. So this value goes almost to 0 0.6. This goes to 0. Point, uh, the same region, 7, 0 0.6. The Z component of the electric field, which is a long propagation direction, essentially goes to about 0.2. In the paraxial regime, essentially, we don't have these. So it's negligible. If you plot all of them together, you will end up with a three-dimensional topology for polarization ellipse. Still is a polarization ellipse, is, is, is an ellipse. But uh, if you look at them, you will see that due to this tilting of uh, a K vector, then the electric field is oscillating uh, 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 not in, let's say, plane uh, orthogonal to, uh, to the propagation direction, but essentially uh, this is, uh, this is uh, oscillating in a specific topology. And uh, if you look at the major axis of polarization ellipse, if you plot them all together, what you will see, you will see that uh, the, it forms a modulus. 
And this is what we call it a, a polarization Mobius strip. And, and uh, this was the first observation of it. Remember that electric field is continuous. So nothing is wrong with electric field. Uh, uh, however, uh, if, you do, if you follow the, the, uh, the blue vectors, there is no discontinuity in them. However, the major axis of polarization ellipse, it has a switch of pi or oh, let's say, uh, 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 oh, uh, let's say, it, in essentially it can be any, any, uh, any uh, integer number of pi. For this specific case, is, uh, case is three pi. All right, uh, uh, then uh, one of my, uh, my, my students uh, uh, say to me, Abraham, you like ties and bow ties, so why not trying to make a uh, knot with polarization of light? So what he did, essentially, he created a very rich polarization topologies, which at this point, you have a lemon topology. Here you have a lemon topology. Here you have a lemon topology. In other places like here, like here, and like here, you do have star topology. This is what I say. These three points are lemon, uh, uh, lemon and these three other three points, they are star topologies. And if you let this beam propagate, essentially what you get that these two, they will these two, they will cancel out each other. And these two, they will cancel out each other. And these two, they will cancel out each other. And if you follow the trajectory, you will see that this trajectory forms a trifoil knot. All right, and uh, we were able also to, to look at the, uh, the topologies of these by looking at the cipher surface and, uh, and uh, characterizing if whether this topology is what we want to create in the laboratory. This was done with one of my best colleague, uh, Mark Dennis, in, in University of Bristol. And of course, Bob Boyd uh, uh, at the University of Ottawa, which uh, I think he will be giving a talk at the EU Institute uh, next month. So uh, we were able to create Mobius. We were able to create knots. What about combination of these two? What we call it frame knot. Essentially, uh, the knot is not only a string, but it has a frame. It has a three-dimensional topology as well. So this was a very recent work in 2020. Uh, which uh, uh, we created it, uh, the, the frame knot, the first ever frame knot in the laboratory, and we were able to, uh, to use it for doing secure classical communication. So all of those knots that we have, they have a specific uh, braid representation, and uh, we assign prime numbers to those braids and we had a specific protocol very close to RSA protocol to do, uh, to do secure classical communication and using the knot as a backdoor to extract the information, which is shared between Alice and Bob. And this is the protocol. And essentially, if you want to look, you can look at the, at the paper and uh, getting a feeling about how this protocol works. Good. So, so far, we were able. Uh, to, we were able to generate uh, uh, any arbitrary spatial mode and also polarization structure. However, we know that also frequency of light can be controlled. So what we, we, we started to work on this, this is a, a work that uh, uh, will be submitted next week. Uh, we deal with different polarization, different spatial mode, and also different frequency. So taking a frequency of omega and taking the second harmonic of these and look at the coherent superposition of these two. And what we end up in the paraxial regime, we end up with some uh, uh, curves, which they are now look like a, a Lissajous curves, which is not surprising. However, we can go to the, to the non-paraxial regime doing the tight focusing and asking a question what we can do with them. Do they have the same topology or the electric field, which is the electric field is forming here, is you are not allowed to look at the polarization ellipse because this is a not monochromatic wave, it's a polychromatic wave. And the, to the tip of electric field is oscillating on a specific curve that I mentioned to you. And we can also look at a, a frequency of omega, two omega, and three omega. So fundamental, second harmonic, and third harmonic 
and each of them we can control the phase and spatial mode. And with these three controls, what we can create, we can create almost a, an extremely rich topology at the focus. For example, this is a pattern that we got it uh, for a specific mode. And if we look at them point by point, you have a different knots uh, localized at those regions. But remember the knot here, they are the tip of electric field. And you can create trifold figure eight knot or for a four one. And also if you go with different superposition, you will get extremely, extremely rich topological structure. Uh, which the, you can even characterize how many knots do you have it in that region. So this was a, a, a very difficult uh, a, a, a computational task for Manuel, one of my PhD students, and a postdoc, uh, uh, Alessio. All right, so uh, talking about polychromatic waves, so it is extremely interesting also to create uh, uh, and shape uh, beams not only at the visible regime but also at XUV because they have applications you can do in uh, uh, understanding the material science property you can also do some sort of let's say uh, creating specific uh, 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 physical proper, uh, properties inside of a material on a, or on the surface of a material so in one of the uh, one of the work with uh, professor Paul Corkum which is uh, 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 which is one of the pioneer uh, researcher in the field of outer second field, and essentially uh, uh, Professor Donna Stickland was uh, uh, Paul Corcom's uh, first postdoc in 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 uh, NRC in Ottawa. So uh, what we have done there, we take we took uh, we create one of those structure like beam at fundamental regime, and we took a strong field. Uh, a, a strong field and doing interference, uh, interference between the two beams. And essentially in the gas, we were able to create high harmonics. And due to the conservation of angular momentum, then each harmonics, each high order harmonics, they pick up specific angular momentum from these beams. So essentially we were able to create L equal to 15 or L equal to 17. So for, sorry, uh, yes, 15 and 17 for 15 harmonic and 17 harmonic. And also we, decide, we de design a device that can be used to manipulate also polarization of high harmonic beams. So that was a, a work also in 2019 that we were able to create circular polarization, a circularly polarized high harmonic beam. And very recently uh, last year, we were able to use and manipulate the, co uh, the, the, the induced coherence here to have some sort of azimutal current by super uh, superimposing a fundamental and second harmonic together. They have different, let's say, uh, polarization and spatial mode, such a way that uh, we can create uh, an azimutal current on the surface of a, a semiconductor. And with this technique, uh, uh, we expect to create uh, a magnetic field at the surface of material, which is high as three Tesla and or four Tesla. All right. And also, and we are not only interesting just to manipulate all of those degrees of freedom. Uh, we also interested to know what's going on with these properties at the quantum regime. For example, you can, you can shape UV beams, you can pump a crystal and then you can create photon pairs, which is created based on the conservation of linear momentum energy, uh, uh, what we call it, I mean, phase matching, you can say. And there one photon probabilistically will be uh, absorbed and two photons will be emitted. So then there will be a question how these two photons, they will pick up the quantum per property of the pump. So with, uh, with this technique, we were able to engineer the two photon or entangled photon pairs uh, in the special uh, degrees of freedom. For example, we were able to uh, characterize uh, dimension 16 modes, and even we were able to understand what's going on with the degrees of entanglement between all of those special modes, which is P and L all together. So with this, uh, I think I will be able to start uh, to talk about uh, uh, a few applications in quantum regime. 
So before doing so, I want to ask uh, the chair kindly remind me how many minutes do I have? So you have uh, 20 minutes more, no problem. How, how many minutes? 20 minutes more. 20 minutes, excellent. Yes. So uh, uh, now, I mean, so far we do physics for fun. However, if you go to agencies and you are, you are asking them for, for giving you funds, then you have to find applications. And this structure light essentially has a lot of application in quantum information processing. Why? Because it gives you the accessibility to, to a higher dimension. So uh, if we deal with polarization, as we discussed, polarization can take the value of left-handed or right-handed. So essentially the Hilbert space associated to polarization degrees of freedom is two dimension. While if we talk about spatial mode, both L and P, they are unbounded. And in principle, you don't have any limits. You can, you can create, as I say, as one of those examples, you can create L equal to 400. So any things that we work in the binary regime now can be extended to higher alphabet. So uh, usually I make an example, although it's classical, uh, but it gives you the, the, uh, the feeling to understand why this is important. Assuming that I want to send a message to someone here, for example, to uh, Professor Ross. So I want to send a letter M. So you have to press the key of M. Then this key of M will be, uh, will be translated into zero and ones. Why? Because our diet and transistors, they are digital. We, we are working in the digital world. And then depending on my computer being 64 bits or 32 bits, that will be either uh, uh, eight chain or can be, can be higher chains of numbers of zero and ones. And then that will be transmitted to India. Uh, we are uh, uh, optical fibers uh, mostly uh, or electric signals. So essentially I have to create eight signals. I have to transmit eight signals and I have to detect eight signals at the end. While if my computer was able to work not in, in, a, in the base of two, but in the base of 256, then I need to only create one signal, the, sending that signal and detecting it. So it is more green to work in higher dimensions. And also it is more secure in the quantum world. So, Usually we have a curve which shows to us that how is going on with the secret key, right? How much information that you can share per photon? Sifted photon, yeah, I, I have to be careful. And how much is the error that you can handle? And essentially in the quantum regime, we are working uh, based on errors. So we want to understand, I mean, right now, uh, let's make another example. So I want to communicate with, uh, 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 with one of you in India. Essentially, we can pick up the old fashioned phones and just calling each other. Assuming someone is interrupting the line. So having another phone device and just picking up and listening to our conversation. Uh, the action of the person, the third party person will be, uh, will be introducing noise to the, our channel. What we do in the quantum regime, we work in the single quanta in such a way that the noise and signal, they will be in the same level. So anyone that interrupting the, 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 uh, the channel by monitoring the noise can be detected. So essentially there is a threshold that how much noise is allowed if you work in the two dimensional base like polarization, then 11% is for standard, what we call it BB84, Bennett Brassard 84 protocol. We have many different protocols, which I will briefly discuss about that. So if you have higher than 11% error, then your channel is not secure. So it means that the information that Eves will receive will be identical or higher than, uh, than, uh, than uh, information shared between Alice and Bob. So, uh, uh, so uh, identical, sorry, not higher. Uh, and if you go to dimension four, you can, in the in zero error case, the number of bits that you are sending will be increased uh, by two. 
If you go to dimension eight will be three, dimension 16 will be four. However, the noise tolerance, and there will be noise tolerance if you go to higher dimension. So the amount of noise that you can handle it in the, this case, dimension four, will be around 19%. In dimension eight will be around 25% and, and the rest. So essentially, instead of working with two dimensions, now you can work on qubits, let's call it the quantum bits. Now you can work with seven, uh, uh, seven dimensional bits, which we call it uh, Q D state. So Q equal to uh, Q D D equal to seven. And in order to do so, you need mutually unbiased bases, a base uh, which essentially, if you take any of those and projecting on either of those seven cases, you will get equal distribution. You will get equal probability. So Alice and Bob, they will pick up either of those two. Uh, Alice randomly picks up one of those two uh, bases, randomly encode zero to six and send it to Bob, but also randomly picks, picks up one of those two bases and does the projection. And then finally, at the end, they will share which bases they, uh, they, uh, they generate and they detect without revealing the information that is shared there. So this is the essential protocol of, uh, uh, of quantum key distribution. I don't want to talk about that. And uh, if it's needed, we can ask, we can discuss that in, 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 in the question Q&A. So the, uh, uh, now that we do have access to higher dimensions using the spatial mode, now we do have the freedom to not only test uh, standard protocols, but other protocols as well. For example, we can go to dimension four, dimension eight, using uh, uh, using BB84, what we call it, the standard protocol for BB84, Bennett Brassard. We can go with CHA15, we can go with what we call it, uh, complete tomographic uh, protocols or Singapore protocols. So all of them, they will give you some maximum errors that they can handle. So each of those protocols, they have some benefits, which the benefit, for example, for child 15 is that this specific uh, protocol is invented for a noisier channel, uh, while Singapore protocol also is better than, uh, than the rest in terms of noise, but also gives you more, uh, 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 more beats, essentially. So uh, you can compare all of those techniques. Why? Because we do have ability to, to have uh, uh, access to higher dimensions. So essentially, one of my PhD student, ex -PhD students, uh, he, uh, he designed a setup which Alice and Bob, they communicate uh, to each other without any human to be involved. And they randomly pick up different protocols and they started to do quantum communication, quantum key distribution. And at the end, we can check out which protocols for our current setup, which involves the devices that they can be used for detection, uh, for classical channel, for generation and detecting the photon states. And uh, it turned out that BB84 dimension four is the best uh, uh, case for our devices in the laboratory. All right, and also, uh, 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 Freddy Bouchard, uh, my ex student, uh, ex PhD student, also he tried to verify if whether going to higher dimension in terms of security will give you the benefit. So what he did, he essentially looked at the security threshold by performing optimal quantum cloning attack to a system. We know very well that in the quantum world, you cannot take a state, a quantum state, and, and copying it. The copy is in quantum world is forbidden. And essentially, you can prove it in two lines uh, with, uh, with linear algebra. But uh, if I want to tell you a physical, uh, let's say, insight on this, is that assuming that I'm allowed to do a, a copy of a quantum system, so I can take a state of psi and I can copy it. So then I have two copy, two identical copy, perfect copy. Then for the first one, I can perform the measurement on x. And the other one, I can perform the measurement on p. So with, without having any uncertainty problem. So at the end, with 100% uncertainty, I can understand what is X for this, what is the P for that. And then I'm violating the uncertainty principle, which is, which is not acceptable. So, but however, you can make a copy which satisfy the uncertainty principle. And this is what we call it optimal quantum cloning. So 
what is happening, Alice sends the information to Bob, but someone like Eve interrupting the channel, what Eve does, take the state and making two copies of these, two identical copies. You can have different protocols, but this is the symmetric protocol that we do have. What is happening, the state is pure, but the, uh, the presence of Eve, what it does, it reduces the purity of state and now we deal with the quantum density matrix. So essentially the state is not pure, it has some impurity due to the presence of Eve. Then we look at the, the impurity of Eve and the presence of Eve when Alice and Bob, they are doing the, the quantum communication in higher dimensions. So the, uh, specifically speaking, this is for dimension seven. So we do have Alice sending one of those seven alphabets and Bob performing the measurement either in the right base or in the mutually unbiased basis. Alice also can send it in the other base. Bob also can perform the measurement here or in mutually unbiased basis. With the presence of Eve, this is what you will get. However, the presence of Eve, what it does, it introduces uncertainty in, in, in the cases when previously we were 100% sure. So that's the, uh, that is what we call an optimal cloning attack uh, a threshold that happens. If you use two dimension, three dimensions, and three, four dimension until seven, this is what happens. So essentially the, the noise that you will introduce for two dimension is this threshold. For three dimension, the noise will be enlarged, higher and higher. And if you go to, to dimension seven, essentially the noise is almost about 39%. So then we know, uh, we can come to the conclusion that uh, by monitoring the noise, you can essentially understand if someone attack into your system, but however, you can go to higher dimension and you are allowed to handle more noises in the system. So this was the first, uh, uh, I would say, proof of optimal quantum cloning attack to to a secure channel. It received a lot of media attention anyway. So, and then uh, of course we tried to look at the different protocols, what we call it, the, uh, I call it the most stupid protocol, which is intercept percent. Someone is interrupting the, the link and then making, uh, making what, uh, what Eve measures and sending to the other side. And from these, we were able to look at the, uh, uh, the cases that there is no attack in different dimension when there is an optimal cloning attack or there is an intercept percent attack. And you will see that the action of eustropper will be uh, introducing more noise and optimal quantum cloning attack is bet much better than intercept percent. All right, so my students, uh, uh, essentially uh, um, one of my bachelor students, uh, a very good one, Alicia Sitt, uh, she did a project which took uh, almost two years. So what she did, she uh, brought the equipment outside of the laboratory and she picks up two buildings at the University of Ottawa and she starts to encode the information in the special modes. And we knew that dimension four is good for all protocol. So instead of using with zero and ones, she worked with zero, 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 one, one, zero, and, and one, one. So she works with two bits of information and she started to send the information securely in the single photon regime, single photon regime, because we are using parametric non-conversion to create photon pairs. And then one of them is used as a classical channel to monitor the turbulence. And the other one is used to send the, the message uh, in the quantum regime. And the other side, Bob detects the information. So I don't, I have photos of them that they had fun on the roof, but anyway, uh, uh, I just jumped to the result. So what is happening, you can use the two dimensional to send them information or you can send uh, four dimensional and then you can send more bits of information. Essentially in the case of two dimensional, the error was about 5%. In the case of four dimensional, the error due to the detection system was about 11%. In a specific case, so for the four dimensional, the threshold to having a secure channel was about, is about 19%. And in this specific case, we had about 11% with dimension two was completely useless because it did not provide the secu positive secret key. 
but however, we could go and use the dimension four and still establishing a key which is higher than the dimension two. So that was the first uh, 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 first high dimensional uh, quantum key distribution in the world. Uh, right now, we have a link of 5.4 kilometers between National Research Council of Canada and the University of Ottawa, which we do have a supercomputer to perform uh, to measure the turbulence and also compensate for the effect of turbulence. Also, we have centimeters to monitor the turbulence in the real time. And, uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately, it's about almost more than a year because you know very well in Canada, uh, almost four months uh, in a year, we have snow and people that cannot work in the roof. Uh, they tried to, to do the first steps and using uh, high dimensional uh, alphabet to do uh, QKD or 5.4 kilometers uh, in 2019, but uh, due to the COVID, I mean, everything is, is on hold currently. Uh, uh, and um, uh, people also, my students, they got interested because, as I say, that four months in, in, in a year, we are dealing with snow, we cannot go into the roof. Then what they, they try to do, they try to do uh, communication in underwater. So. Uh, you know that the, our knowledge about uh, oceans, I mean, deep in the ocean is essentially less than what we know about Mars or about the surface of the sun. So uh, there are a lot of sensors in rivers, in, uh, 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 in, in the ocean, which uh, they are there, they take information and sometimes you, and you need to extract those information. What they do usually, they send someone down to pick up those devices uh, and then getting a new one installed. So essentially what we were discussing and we were talking, having light uh, 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 optical communication in underwater. Underwater is very interesting because uh, uh, the transmission window is about 420 nanometers that you can reach to almost 230 meters, which is sufficient for most of the experiment even to do submarine to satellite communication. And uh, uh, in the telecom wavelength almost is, uh, uh, is opaque. So you cannot transmit information in, in, uh, in that range. So this is the reason that uh, in submarine, usually they use acoustic uh, for doing uh, uh, communication. And acoustic has a drawback because the, the beat rate is extremely, extremely low. And on the other side also is unsecured. So in North America, you can listen to submarine in Russia. So anyway, uh, so they try to go outside. They want to have fun students. So they, uh, they went to a swimming pool of one of my students and uh, they had a classical channel. They tried to send uh, uh, information through, uh, through uh, uh, water. And at that time, I think they went to almost about five meters. And what you see there is a huge turbulence that we have not experienced in the free space. In the free space, the turbulence is extremely fast. It's about, almost about, let's say, 300 hertz. Then you need to go to 2 kilohertz to do the compensation properly. In underwater, the, uh, as you look at the turbulence, the turbulence you can see that is in order of few hertz, which is very slow. But uh, in the free space, we have only two Zernika polynomial, which is tip till. While if you go to underwater, you are exciting the other higher order of Zernika polynomial. So you will have not only moving the beam left, right, and up, down, but also you, you scratch the beam. So, and they try to perform a QKD. By the way, also they try to do that in, in, in Ottawa River. So they went outside, they do a proper QKD in the polarization degrees of freedom. So uh, they were not able to go higher than dimension three because of the turbulence, it was extremely uh, fast, uh, sorry, extremely strong that distorts the information. And very recently uh, uh, they, they perform a, a, a systematic experiment which they were able to control the distance between Alice and Bob uh, uh, in, a, in a flume, and this is the flume. So they, they brought the optical tables and you know uh, all single photon detectors and, and uh, SLMs and other devices, and they perform uh, uh, QKD. And this is a, a photo which I like it very much. 
uh, Alicia tried to send uh, blue and green lights, strong laser, and you will see that uh, blue penetrate more and uh, green will absorb uh, scatters from light, uh, from, from water uh, uh, much faster than, than the blue. So they perform also QKD uh, at the single photon regime and not only with, uh, with uh, OM modes and polarization, but also they did the first uh, vector modes QKD and they were able to reach to 31 meters, which is sufficient to do QKD from a submarine to a satellite, uh, so let's say to, uh, 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 to a drone or airplane. That will be my last slide. So uh, I think, uh, right, so I have a few minutes, not more than that. Uh, uh, we, I, I strongly believe that uh, human, they will go out of the solar, solar system. So uh, then in order to do communication, we need to deal with a, a curved space-time geometry, essentially with the places that the gravity will affect uh, on the photon, uh, photon's curvature. So, uh, sorry, photon's uh, uh, wave function. So uh, one of my uh, uh, assistants, essentially coming from quantum gravity, he, he did a very intense calculation, which is on, is on the archive. I think the calculation is all more than 30 pages. If you are interested, you can go there. He found a, an analytical solution that when you have a wave function and sending close to the, in, in a curved space-time geometry, the wave function will be distorted based on the uh, uh, Ricci matri matrices there. And uh, essentially, he looked into cases that you can encode the information in longitudinal mode. This is what people usually, they do it for long distances. And he understands that you will have a distortion in the beam, which is about 10%. And this 10% is extremely huge in the quantum regime, might not be very important in the classical regime, but in the quantum regime. So it changes entirely the game that we have. So with these, I will not talk about quantum simulators. I will go to, oops, it is, okay. I will go to concluding slide. So the goals that my team has is building, uh, with the help of uh, other colleagues in Canada, building up quantum internet Canada, which requires communication between submarines, a fiber network, and also free space communications. Uh, we are also, I didn't talk about electron beams. We do a lot of research activities on shaping electron beams and extracting information in transmission electron microscope and also getting uh, devices and fabricating devices to shape those, uh, 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 those uh, quantum waves. And also we are interested to create new uh, devices in the laboratory and, and, and uh, uh, doing quantum tests. Uh, oh, satisfying our curiosity in the laboratory. This is not possible alone. This is the work of many, many people. Maybe I would say the 300 excellent collaborators including uh, members of my team. Uh, so Frederick Bouchard, uh, my PhD student, which uh, he's a research officer right now in NRC. Hugo Larocq, which is in MIT right now, PhD student. Robert Fickler, which is a professor right now in, uh, in, uh, in Finland. Uh, Eliahu Cohen, which is a professor in Israel. Uh, Ingwen as well, uh, Ingwen in, uh, he's an officer in National Research Council, uh, Canada. Alicia Seed, uh, Felix, which uh, they perform most of the free space QKD, uh, Florence as well, uh, uh, Alessio, Manuel, uh, um, and uh, Kasim, which he did a lot of uh, interesting work with the uh, curve time space, and uh, Fasha, which he does uh, a lot of work on quantum simulators, and many other members, including Kevin, which he does uh, a lot of electronics, and Reza which has very interesting results, which I didn't get the permission to show to you. So, and uh, uh, no doubt, many external collaborators, including Bob Boyd, which he will give you a talk, I think next week, uh, next month in, in your institute, Paul Corkum, uh, Mars Paget, Gerd Loix, Luis, Yakir Aharnov, Rafael, Vincenzo Grillo, uh, which is one of my main collaborators, uh, Luis Sanchez Soto and Chabat Hishami, which is my main partner at National Research Council Canada. So uh, thank you very much. I hope that I didn't run too much of uh, the time. 
thank you professor ibrahim karimi uh, that was a very illuminating talk on uh, novel topologies and you, you have discussed various aspects of quantum key distribution i think we have a couple of questions in the q and a chat box let me just read out okay so uh, are you going to read them all, uh, yes. to me or uh, I, will, I, I will read out i will read out the questions thank you uh, the first question is that when there is a qubit exchange between alice and bob as an observer are we use dropping the communication channel if yes then how do we secure this network okay so uh, uh let me see i if i can have a slide free or oh i i had, I had to thanks also the the agencies that they help without them is almost impossible to do any work <laughs> Uh, let me see if I have a, a, I can create a new uh, free slide. Um, edit. Okay. Let's have that. Fantastic. Okay. So uh, you are saying that I have Alice and Bob which essentially Alice is sending the information to Bob. Uh, Alice and Bob, they don't send, uh, uh, let, let's say in this way. So what Alice and Bob, they do, either they select uh, HV polarization, so H or V polarization, or they create anti-diagonal diagonal polarization. And Ali sends these to Bob. What Bob does, Bob performs the measurement in either of those bases. For example, if uh, the first state is created in H, V basis, we don't want to talk about what is the information. For example, H can be zero, V can be one. All right? So Ali picks up one of those without telling anyone, even without telling what is the base that she's using and sending to Bob. And when it sends to Bob, what is happening, Bob performs the measurement in one of those two bases. For example, uh, he performs the measurement in plus basis. Then he will get perfectly either H or V. For example, he will get H, which means that the information was zero. Assuming that someone is interrupting the link. So someone like Eve is interrupting the link. Eve performs the measurement on the single photon. So performs the measurement in which base? Let's call it in the, uh, uh, oh, all gone. So performs the measurement in, oh, it is difficult. Let me, let me say in what? Performs the measurement in, uh, in, in V basis. When she performs the measurement in V basis, the photon, uh, photon wave function will collapse in V. Then, she gets either zero or one, and then Eve is creating identical photon and sending to Bob. So she, she gets it in a anti-diagonal diagonal and sending to Bob. And Bob has the 50-50% chances to detect them in V uh, or in H basis. Finally, Alice and Bob, they talk to each other and they say that which basis they use to perform the measurement. Since presence of E was in wrong base, then the chances that the, the error will be introduced to Bob's measurement is 50%, because 50% of the chances will be either in V and H. Then when they talk to each other, they compare the amount of information that is wrong. Let's say after 100 times or 1,000 times trying to do so, uh, 500 of the time, they are in the right situation because it's completely random. Then from these 500, uh, 500 situations, they will sacrifice 100 of them. And they say that what is the result of these 100 together? And from these, they will understand if there is any, or any error there. And the error is coming from essentially from Eve's present, because Eve also can be in a wrong base. And when Eve is in the wrong base, her presence will be introducing the noise in the measurement of, of, of Bob. Remember that the wave function will collapse always after the measurement, which is strong measurement, is not weak measurement. Um, one more last question. Uh, how far and how near 
quantum key communication system is with existing optical fiber wireless communication system considering sources detectors and channels into account it de that depends on uh, uh, first of all dimensionality that you are going to use and protocol essentially for example the standard protocol that i think bb84 is is what people they look for uh, and by the way what i talked about is discrete variable uh, uh, protocol is not cv is not continuous variable if you go to continuous variable it's completely different world they use continuous variable to increase the rate but the range will be shorter so essentially it's about few hundred kilometers not more than that okay that was a very good presentation uh, thank you professor ibrahim kadimi for your wonderful talk thank, thank you. you thank you very much thanks a lot